I learned a little hack that I think is gonna be really, really good and you guys are gonna wanna kiss me on the lips for this one. I'm telling you, it's that good. Hey guys, and welcome to the house of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today I have three very quick and easy DIYs that you can do for your home that will be modern, they will be gorgeous, and they are going to totally shock you how easy these are to make because when I'm running my design business, sometimes I just need something that's gonna help my budget out. So I have these little DIYs that are kind of in my back pocket that really help me save myself and my clients money and it's really fun because some of these you can do yourself if you like to do DIY projects yourself or maybe you have kids or a niece or nephew or a neighbor. Um, some of them you wanna do some DIY projects with. Sometimes it's just fun to just throw on your old clothes and grab an old t-shirt, grab a can of paint. Um, almost everything that I've got is stuff that you probably even have on hand. That's how easy these projects are, but they may be easy, but they are also going to be gorgeous and they're totally going to elevate your space and make it look amazing. Before we jump in, make sure you hit subscribe. Also check out our DIY playlist. It's totally binge worthy. I know you're going to love it. We've had all kinds of projects that we've done for our house and for our clients. So we are loading you up with more ideas today and I've got you kind of zoomed out in this great big room. And that is because our first project is big. project today, we're going to start with our DIY abstract artwork. I've done a lot of DIY abstract artwork in the past, so again, refer back to that playlist if you want more ideas, but this one is the one that I have on my fireplace right now, and a lot of you guys were asking on Instagram when I posted a picture of it if I made it myself. So the truth is, is that pretty much every piece of abstract art in my house is my own work because I think it's really fun to throw on some old clothes, get a little dirty, grab a can of paint, paintbrush, what kind of things can I do around the house to just personalize my home in a way that also feels elevated and modern and hopefully very, very chic. So I have this canvas and this is actually an old canvas. If this has a lot of layers on it. And that is because sometimes I don't like what I've done or sometimes I'm in a rush and I've got to get to a client's house and I need a piece of art. So maybe we're staging the home, it's gonna come back to me and I'll just paint it. I'll just paint over what's on there. So this has lots of layers of paint and I think it's better to start with this. So you could maybe have a piece of artwork that you already have sitting around your house. You could also use a piece of artwork if you are lucky, look somewhere like Home Goods and get one with a picture frame. That way you don't even have to pay for framing afterwards and it will save you actually a ton of money and time to instantaneously have a piece of artwork. So you just need a canvas, preferably one that has some layers of paint on it. Otherwise, your step one would be to just literally slap some paint on your canvas and let it dry. And then slap some more paint on your canvas and let that dry too. And then maybe like throw some paint down and just kind of let it get blobby and then let, let, that, let that dry too. <laughs> and then finally when all those layers have dried, you come to today. And literally all you need is a paintbrush, mine's dusty because it's been sitting down in the basement, and I have limousine leather paint, which is left over from painting my family room. And um, I just wanna paint some circles. I'm like, I gotta look at the one up there. How'd I do it? I just painted a big circle and then a big circle and then I just kind of flopped some stuff down on it. So this is why this is so perfect for you to be able to do or a child could do this too because you really don't want it to be perfect. Perfect is, kind of a no-no actually in in artwork. You want it to feel like a child has done it. So that's why I think sometimes kids are actually the best artists because they're not worried about things being too perfect. Now you can see I do have some plastic laid down on the table, which I do highly recommend no matter how old you are because this can get messy for sure. But I'm just gonna put some brush strokes in it and I do not have a plan. 
I really don't have a plan. You can look at the one that I've done. You can see about this one when we're all finished, if you like it. Um, but otherwise, you, you want some brush strokes in it. That's what makes your art look more high-end, is that it actually has brush strokes. A lot of times, the, the prints that they sell at the store, they just don't look very high-end because they don't have brush strokes. And it's so obvious that an artist did not make that. So um, I'm gonna just kind of connect these. So this one will be a little bit different because I'm chit-chatting and not paying attention to what I'm doing. So I just kind of go until I'm happy with it. So um, this one will be different from the one on the fireplace, which is kind of fun because then it's like, okay, now I have more original art and none of these will look the same. Ideally, you will be framing this afterwards, but the truth of the matter is, is that a lot of times I don't even do it. I, I know that it looks way more high end when it is um, when it is framed. So I think I'm gonna add a third ring. Ooh, we're living on the edge here, aren't we? I don't necessarily want it to look like it's the Olympic rings, so I'm not gonna add too many of my rings, but just some circles here. They are painted in one, but you just wanna let your brush kind of empty of paint so that you can get those brush strokes around the edges. And I could pay, maybe one more. Let's do one more, kind of around this bottom. Again, I, I think sometimes it's better if you don't think too much because overthinking your artwork just makes it feel like it's overthought. And an artist is supposed to be free and that's what makes them so amazing. So yeah, that's it. You just saw the entire thing happen. Now it's gonna be upside down for you, but that's it. I mean, how cool is that? Let me see if I can back up with it so you can see it. So there we go, we've got some brush strokes. Now, the one thing that I'm gonna to add to this that I really like to add to my projects is some splashes. So you can stop here but I like to have like little splashes of paint. So I'm gonna go grab a cup of water and show you how easy that is to add as well. I don't actually buy plastic cups. So if you have a, a, a plastic cup or something that you can use, that's great. I just have an old Cool Whip container um, that I, you know, I save a lot of times because that way we can reuse them. And I've just got a little bit of water sitting in it. And I'm just literally going to just kind of let the paint drip. And again, this is when having your space covered is really important. So uh, you may even wanna do this outside, maybe in the grass with something underneath it. And then we just sort of splash it in. And I really think this just adds another layer. And that's how I get those layers underneath as well is letting it be more blobby, <laughs> if that makes any sense. You definitely, this is very delicate and it's gonna give it a more delicate feel. I'm not even reloading the paint on it. I'm just wanting to have like this sort of, um, just a sort of delicate touch to it on this side of it. But if you're doing the layers underneath, those are big blobs and you can literally just load your paintbrush up and let it just drop right on top. So it's just, it, that's what's so fun about it is that you get to do it any way that you want. And when you're done, if you don't like it, just paint over it and start again. Isn't that so fun? I love this so much. Who would have thought? Canvas, old paint, done. DIY number two is probably something that most of you have attempted or maybe even done. But I, I learned a little hack that I think is gonna be really, really good and you guys are gonna wanna kiss me on the lips for this one. I'm telling you, it's that good, okay? So you could, you could take your can of paint. If that's all you've got and you've got this on hand and you wanna do something really fast, you could take your can of paint and you could paint this out and it would give you a really nice, now this is matte paint. So it's not gonna be glossy. It's gonna be kind of in a medium sheen. And it's just gonna give it kind of a raw look. But it's not going to look old, if that makes any sense. So you really need to think through, do you want your planters to have kind of an aged European look? Do you want them to be medium and shine? Or do you want them to be more glossy? So 
Um, I have done a couple little samples and I have got them sitting out in the garden. I did these a few weeks ago for our outdoor area and you guys were asking about the planters. And part of the reason was I could not find planters anywhere. And I was wanting to put some matte black planters out there as well as some that looked like they were really aged. So if you want to have that look, I have got the Gloss Paint and Primer by Rust Oleum. One coat of this will give you a medium gloss but I found that that gloss did not stay. I wasn't trying to achieve a super glossy look, so this was perfect for some of them. Now, what I really wanted, and what's really the genius side of this entire thing, is that I really wanted something that would look really raw and European. And I've seen all these DIYs where people are putting dirt on them and clay and all this, like, there's like nine steps to it. <laughs> In fact, even I, many, many moons ago, have even painted a DIY of how to get that antique look on your planters. Yeah, that had multiple steps. This has one step. If you want that European look, because I think it's really fun, okay? I think it's really fun to have something really modern sitting next to something that feels aged. So it just depends on what I'm doing, whether I'm gonna use the shiny glossy black that will give me a higher sheen on my planters, or do I want that chalky, aged European look in one step? I am not joking, they're out in the garden right now and they have aged perfectly. They are genius and they were literally one coat. I will leave a link for these items down in the show notes so that you can find them. This is Rust Oleum Chalked. This is their smoked glaze. Now it says create an antique look. So you can take a planter like this and simply put one coat of the chalked spray paint on it and it will give you that antique look in one step. It's genius. <laughs> one that I have not even attempted yet and I don't even know if it's going to work. I know, you guys love it when I just attempt. <laughs> I don't even know if this stuff's gonna work. I bought these for, um, these are actually from Ikea. It's got the little woven texture. I bought these, they were supposed to go into a home installation and I didn't end up using them. And then we haven't been back to Ikea and they've been sitting out in my garage four months and I don't even know where the receipt is at this point. I'm sure they would give me a store credit if I asked and pleaded and begged and cried, but why go through all that? I mean, honestly. So you could, for this one, take, again, your paintbrush and paint this, but that's going to be it's gonna be a lot. I mean, honestly, it's gonna be a lot because you're trying to get into all these little crevices and it's not going to be very sleek or fancy. So I am gonna take this puppy outside and I'm going to spray paint it. And then I'm gonna show you how I'm going to turn in, turn this little basket, which is literally not usable. It's got holes all the way around. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna turn it into a vase, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> now that I've made this promise. All right, so we're gonna head out to the garage because we need some ventilation for this spray paint and we're gonna spray this baby up. All right, let's go. While that one dries, for the sake of time, I happen to have a second one and I wanna show you my little trick. I actually use this trick on pretty much any big vase because if your vase is really big or maybe it's made of clay or it might be porous, filling it up isn't always a good option. So my little hack that I do is that I either grab a drinking glass or one of those little vases that they sell at the dollar store, the really thin ones. You can take those, fill them up with water, and then just simply slide it down into the bottom of the vase. 
And then when you put your greenery down in it, you're gonna stick your greenery down into the water. And it's just gonna look just like it's a regular vase. It gives you all this cool texture. Mine will be black and it will be amazing, but it does not leak water and it can actually hold water, which is pretty amazing. Well, I guess that is all the time that we have for today. I hope that we have inspired you with these DIYs. Make sure that you hit subscribe. Don't forget to check out the DIY playlist. I'll leave all the links for the products we used today in the show notes, as well as the links to the DIY playlist so that you can find everything that you'll need. Oh, and don't forget, let me know down in the comments if you would like to have more DIYs because it's kind of fun to get to do these. I haven't done one in a while. So yeah, all right, I'll see you guys soon. Bye. This planter is one that I actually bought in Europe. And I do have a website that I buy them from here in the US if you guys are looking. But, oh my gosh, it's so hot. It's literally like 100 degrees and 150,000 humidity, which I know would probably mean it's raining, but that's what it feels like. It's that hot out here. It's Hotlanta. So I'll leave a link for where you can find planters like this if you just want to have them done you don't have time to do a DIY but let me show you how this one look at this that is the chalk paint after it's been sitting out here I think it's been about two weeks you can see it leaves like a, a chalk on my hands which is exactly what these will do as well so they actually really look legit. I wish that you guys were here so you could smell the gardenias because they are amazing. But I'm gonna get some quick little shots of this and run inside before I actually start pouring sweat because it's that hot here in Atlanta.